honeycomb brioche pattern is built over an even number of stitches. I have 10 stitches over here and I'm gonna use two of them as salvages to make sure my swatch has neat, nice looking edges. We'll start with the setup row. This is a row that we worked just once, it is not included in the pattern repeat. And we're gonna treat the salvages as slip stitch salvages. So we're gonna slip the first stitch and purl the last stitch of every row. So we slip the first stitch, our salvage, and then we work a sequence of make a yarn over, slip one stitch purl wise with the yarn at the back of the work. So we go with the tip of the right needle from right to left and the yarn is at the back and knit one stitch. And then do it again. Make a yarn over, slip a stitch, knit a stitch. To streamline the process of making yarn over and slipping a stitch, place the yarn on the tip of the left needle and then insert the tip of the right needle under the yarn strand and into the stitch, just push it a bit further and then take the left needle out, leaving the yarn, which is now a yarn over, and the stitch on the right needle. This way we'll make a yarn over and slip a stitch much faster. And then knit a stitch. So let's do it again. The yarn goes on the left needle, then we go under the strand and into the stitch and make a yarn over and slip a stitch in one simple motion. And knit one stitch. When you get to the last stitch, this is our second salvage, we're gonna knit it. Because we added yarn overs in this row, uh, the number of stitches increased. So when you count your stitches, either don't count yarn overs or treat a yarn over plus the closest uh, to its stitch as one stitch and count it as one stitch. Turn your work and place a marker. The setup row was a wrong side row. So when we turn the work, we look at the right side of the work and we're gonna place a marker right now to mark the right side of the work. I'll tell you a bit later why it is so important. For now, just trust me and place a marker right away so that we know where the right side of the work is. The pattern repeat it has four rows in it. In the first row, we slip the first stitch, the salvage, and then we knit two stitches separately. So we knit one stitch and then knit the next stitch and then slip one stitch purlwise with the yarn at the back of the work. And it will always be a yarn over. See, this is a yarn over and I'm slipping it purlwise with the yarn at the back of the work. And then we continue doing the same thing. Knit one, knit another one, and slip the yarn over with the yarn at the back of the work. And when you get to the last stitch, which would be right now, we'll purl it because this is our second salvage. Just like this. Now turn your work. And now we come to the second row of the pattern and we know it is a wrong side row because we don't see the marker. It's not facing us, right? So when this happens, we know we are working a wrong side row. In this row, we slip the first stitch, the salvage, and then we knit two stitches together. And this knit two together is gonna be a stitch plus a yarn over that we uh, made in uh, the uh, setup row. So we knit these two stitches together and it will always be a stitch plus a yarn over. And then we make a yarn over and slip the next stitch from the left needle to the right needle, purlwise with the yarn at the back of the work. And we do it again. Knit two together. And then we can use the same trick as we did in the setup row, bring the yarn to the left uh, needle and then make a yarn over and slip a stitch in one simple motion. Knit two together, make a yarn over, slip a stitch. Make two together, make a yarn over and slip a stitch. The last stitch is a salvage, we're gonna purl it. And this was our second row of the pattern repeat. Can you work? Now we move to the right side row. We know that because of the marker. And the, the third row is gonna go like this. Slip the first stitch, then knit one stitch, slip one stitch, and again, it's a yarn over, and then knit one. 
knit one, slip, knit, knit, slip, knit. And we'll do it one more time before we get to the last stitch. Knit, slip, knit. The last stitch is a sewage, we know it by now, and we're gonna purl it. So this was row three of the pattern. And now we get to the last row of the pattern repeat, row four. It is a wrong side row. Slip the first stitch, the salvage, and then make a yarn over and slip a stitch. And see, I'm using the same trick again because it's faster. So if we can make it faster without sacrificing the quality of the knitting, why not, right? And then we knit two together and again it is a yarn over plus a stitch. Then make a yarn over, slip a stitch, knit two together. And we do it again and again. And purl the last stitch. This was the pattern repeat. Repeat these four rows and you will build a beautiful honeycomb brioche pattern. If you look carefully at the instructions in the pattern repeat, you will notice that we basically do two simple things. In every right side row, we knit every stitch and we slip every yarn over with the yarn at the back of the work in every right side row. And in every wrong side row, we knit together the yarn over and the stitch that is the closest to it and we make a yarn over and slip the uh, stitches that stand alone, the lonely stitches. So if you spread your work on the needle, then you will clearly see where these groups of stitches are. So this is a yarn over plus a stitch. They kind of stick together. And this is a standalone stitch. Again, a duo of stitch plus yarn over and a standalone stitch. So in every wrong side row, we're gonna knit these two together and we're gonna make a yarn over and slip this uh, lonely, so to say, stitch. We're gonna make it a friend, a yarn over. So that's what we do all the time. And that's why it was so important to place a marker to remember where the right side of the work is. So you don't even have to follow the four rows, um, the instructions for the four rows. All you need to know is whether it is a right side row that you're about to start or whether it is a wrong side row, and then follow the simple rule. Right side row, knit every stitch and slip every yarn over with the yarn in the back of the work. Every wrong side row, when you don't see a marker, we knit together the yarn over plus a stitch and we make yarn over and slip the stitch, the standalone stitches throughout the row. So you don't even have to keep track of the rows. That is a very helpful trick and that's a, the easiest way to make honeycomb brioche pattern. So as you keep working on the project you will see that the texture becomes really nice and puffy and cozy and absolutely gorgeous right under your hands. And uh, this, uh, this is a beautiful pattern for scarves and blankets and sweaters and cardigans and pretty much any cozy project that you come up with. It looks absolutely amazing and highly textured on the right side of the work and it looks a lot like reverse stocking net on the wrong side of the work but without curling. As you see this pattern does not have any curling like stocking net stitch for example so you can use it for flat projects like scarves and blankets. Just make sure you add salvages to make the edges of your project neat and nice looking. For more details about honeycomb brioche stage, go to tenroseday.com slash honeycomb brioche. Happy knitting, my friend. I'll talk to you in the next tutorial.